What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel once again. So in a previous video, I tested out the Monport K40 style CO2 laser. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at their GL60 fiber laser. So this is rather big. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get this unboxed. We'll get all the pieces laid out. Let's take a look at this. Let's get it hooked up to the computer. Let's try it out and let's see how this thing performs. All right, so I got this all taken out of the box and all laid out on the table so you can see everything that it comes with. And over on the right-hand side, you can see that it does come with a grounding cable. If you're gonna need it, I don't think I will, so I'm not too concerned about that at the moment. It does have the foot pedal, all the little Allen keys in order to assemble everything, the data cable, the goggles, the flash drive, which also includes a USB-C adapter in case you're gonna need that, the power cable, the user manual, which taking a look at this, it doesn't actually give instructions on how to put this together. So I guess I'm just gonna guess, but to me, this doesn't look really difficult. There's only a few screws and this was all that was included. So I don't think this should take long at all, but you do have a whole bunch of testing materials, some little dog tags, some cards, rings, things like that to test out on. And it does include this nice ruler, which you can use as the focal length to make sure you got everything lined up. So I'll go ahead, I'll get this all put together, and then we'll be back right after that. So the first thing I'll do to get this all set up is I'm gonna take this vertical arm right here, and we're going to attach that right onto there. So next I'll take these M4 screws and we'll get them all screwed in at the bottom. Now I'll get this handle put on right on top. First we'll put down the little plastic gasket. Get the handle on, and we'll put down this metal gasket. Let's see if I can get that right on top. And the M3 screw goes right in after. Now I'll install the laser head itself, just using these two little thumb screws. And there's two little screw holes right here to line up. So I am left with two extra screws. And so I don't lose these, these two holes right on the side. I'm just gonna place them in here just to make sure I don't lose them. So coming around to the back side of the machine, you can see the power adapter right here. Right here is for the foot pedal, which I'm about to hook up in a second. You have the rotary attachment right here. I currently do not have the rotary attachment, but down the road, I'll probably pick that up and that goes right here. If you need to ground it, you can ground it right here, and this is for the data port for the cable right here. So here's the foot pedal. I'll get this hooked up right into the slot. So over here on the front, you have the emergency stop, you have the Z lift up and down, and you have the power button. All right, so we're all set. We got this all put together, and this probably only took about 10 minutes, and that's with filming too, so this really did not take long at all. Just a few screws, 
mount it together, and you're all set. Plug in some cables. So now I'm just going to go head over to my computer. I'm going to get the little flash drive hooked up. We'll see what's on here. It should come with the EasyCAD 2 is what I was told. But I'm going to go head over to my computer. We'll get this all set up, and we'll go from there. All right, so here I am over at my computer, and I did insert the USB drive, and this is everything that it came with. It does still have the SanDisk install software and everything on that. I don't need that. I can actually just delete it, but here's the folder that comes with the EasyCAD, the manual, and everything you're going to need. Now, I was going to use the EasyCAD software, but I decided I'm just going to stick with Lightburn since that's what I'm familiar with, and I did pick up the license for the Galvo, and it was $90. Not a big deal. I already had the license already for Lightburn, so just the add-on was only an additional $90. Bucks. But if you don't want to do that, you can certainly use the EasyCAD 2 that it does come with, and it does come with the core file and everything you're going to need, all the drivers if you're running XP, Windows, anything like that. But for the time being, we're just going to use Lightburn, so I can just close out of this. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll get this plugged into my computer and turned on. And I'm not sure if you can hear that, but the fan does kick on briefly and then shuts off. So it is on, and I do have some aluminum pieces, some stainless steel we're going to be trying out, and they're test materials as well. So we'll go head back over to the computer. We'll get this set up, and we'll try a little test run. I do like to just put down a little piece of aluminum sheeting just to make sure that if anything does go askew, I don't go burning the machine or anything like that. So I'll just keep a piece laid down just for testing purposes. So I always like to run a power test first before I really start anything, just to kind of see the power of the laser. So I'm just gonna use this piece of scrap aluminum that I have, and we'll get that set down. And always make sure to remove the lens cap before you do anything, that way you don't go burning nothing. So, so I'll head back over to the computer, we'll set up the power test, and we'll get that burned, and then go from there. So back over here in light burn, I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna quickly, I don't know, put an A, and I'll resize this, and we'll just make this pretty small, just so I can get, make sure I get this laser head in focus. Let's just throw that in the center, somewhere around there. And for these settings, pulse frequency, let's set that about 30. Let's set the speed to 3,000 millimeters per second, and I'll set the power to, I don't know, maybe, let's set it to 30. And we'll just do a line and number of passes. I just want one. And that looks good just for this getting it set up. And so if I head over into frame, now I can set this to run continuously. So it continuously goes. That way I can get this in focus so it doesn't just go really fast and stop. So I'll just go ahead and I'll hit start. And then I'll raise and lower this to where I think this is set up good. So up here at the top, it has this little laser light button that when you press it, you can see the little dots right here. And this will help you get it in focus and you want them all to overlap. So if I move this up and down, you can see how they're getting closer and farther away from each other. So I want those to be completely all in one so it looks like one dot. So right around there. And now if I head over to the computer and I start the little laser, I can move this using the buttons to go up and down till I have the strongest beam. So as you can see, it has the outline box, and I'm just gonna move this. So it's going to cut that little A right in there, but make sure you wear your safety goggles before you do this, just to make sure you don't burn your eyes out. So I'll go ahead and I'll click Start, and this will run continuously, and I'll raise and lower this to where I think the power is the strongest. So probably right about there. So now if I take the ruler that they supply, I can set that to the top of the material. And if I just go right to, not to where the actual lens is, but to where the bottom of this is, I feel like that's the easiest way to measure it. And this looks like 338 millimeters. So to me, that's the optimal distance from the head to where the material that you'll be engraving. 
So depending on where you measure it from, for me, I'm just using the top. So 338 millimeters to me is probably the best spot that I'm going to get. Okay, so back over in Lightburn, I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm just going to delete that and we'll run a power test so I can go into laser tools, material test, and we'll get this set up. And this is all default, it looks like, so we're not gonna go low as 100 millimeters per second. I'm gonna change this to the slowest is gonna be 500 millimeters per second. And let's set the max to maybe five. We'll do a count, let's do five, so it kind of breaks it up. This way when we do a preview, it's gonna be small enough to actually fit on that piece of aluminum. And I can actually edit this material settings. And for the frequency, set this at 46, because according to their paper that it came with, I think that was optimal. I'm gonna leave the rest of this alone. The Q-Pulse I'll set at 200. So I go into preview. So the interval will be 0.2 millimeters. It'll do 10 passes for each one, which is fine. Frequency will have at 46 kilohertz, and the Q-Pulse is at 200 nanoseconds. So let's go ahead. I'll get this all set up. We'll run this, and then we'll come back right after that. All right, so I went ahead and did two passes, or two different material tests, one with the 46 kilohertz and one at the 30 kilohertz. And you can see the difference that it did in terms of like deepness and color gradients. So here you can see, let's see if I can get it in focus. The line interval was 0.02, 10 passes, the frequency was 46 and the Q pulse was 200. And then down here at the bottom, line interval 0.2, frequency was 30 kilohertz, and the Q pulse was 200 as well. So in terms of frequency, you can see how much darker and deeper this one is at 500 millimeters per second at 100% power compared to 500 and 100 at 30 kilohertz. Definitely a big difference. It might be a little bit hard to see on camera, but this is definitely much deeper so a good test to try out. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do this one more time, only we're gonna change the line interval to 0.05 on both of them. I'll keep everything else the same and see what kind of difference that makes. Okay, so here are the two passes again, which the same exact settings, only this time the line interval is 0 0.05 on both of these, and we have 46 kilohertz and 30 kilohertz for the frequency on these two, and you can definitely see the difference. I just did this on the back side, this way I can easily flip it over. So you can see how much deeper this is at 46 kilohertz, or at 0 0.02 millimeters compared to 0 0.05. You can see the difference for sure. Same with down here at the bottom, if I split this over from 0 0.05 to 0 0.02, definitely makes a difference. So I think it's always a nice test to do this on different materials that you're going to be using. This is just aluminum. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna run some more tests, only this time I'll try it on some stainless steel. And I'll just use this sheet. So I'll just place this one down, I'll go back in, I'll get this set up and adjust some of the settings so it's not exactly the same, but just to try it out and see if we can kinda of get maybe some different colors and whatnot for that based on the frequency. All right, so I ran a few more tests, changing the frequency and the Q pulse on each one just a little bit. And you can see over here, let's say, so I have the frequency of 46, Q pulse of 200. You can kind of see how it kind of comes out coming over. I have the frequency at 75. I have a Q pulse of 500. And you can kind of see the difference that it does does leave some burn marks but then over here I changed the frequency to 300 
the Q pulse, I lowered all the way down to 10. And you can kind of see the, the goldish colors and grays that it kind of produced. And then down here, you can kind of see like the bluish, kind of hard to see on camera, but the different colors. When I lowered this Q pulse to 50, but the frequency I set to 200 kilohertz. So you can kind of see the colors you can achieve just by adjusting some of the, the settings in it. Again, it is kind of hard to see on camera, but there's a good angle how you can kind of see how it looks. And I can change it on here, move it around a little bit. That way you can kind of see. So I think this is a good test to run on different materials just to kind of see the different colors you can get. And this gives me a good kind of stepping stone to go off of if I'm going to engrave an image, let's say, or something, or I just want it to come out a different color. So I'll, I'll try this now. And I kind of like how this kind of bluish color looks. So I'm going to try this on one of like the stainless steel dog tags and I'll just try some text and, and see how that works and kind of go from there. So back over in Lightburn, let's just grab some text to put over on this dog tag, which is stainless steel and just type dog. Let's change this font maybe to something a little bit better. I don't know. There we go. Something that's a little bit more readable. That's bigger, that's thicker. So if I come over here into the settings, I'm gonna go off of the settings that I used to kind of get that bluish color. And that was at B to 500. The frequency was set to 200 and the Q pulse was at 50. And for the power, we have it at 32.5 according to the test. So let's do that. We're just gonna run this one time. So this shouldn't take long at all. Go ahead, I'm gonna get this more centered and get this lined up, get this adjusted, and we'll hit start and let's see how this turns out. So that is finished, we'll take a look. And you can see the colors on that, I think that came out great. And this only took, I don't know, 15 seconds to get that. So to me, I, I think that works really awesome and really well. I'm super happy with how that turned out. So yeah, I think I'll keep those settings saved if I wanna do those colors and have it like that again. But I'll run a few more tests. We'll try this out some more on some other things and go from there. All right, let's just add beware of above it we're going to do this in like a gold color so i went ahead and i set the frequency to 300 kilohertz power of 100 speed of 1625 and a q pulse of 10 and the line interval is 0 0.02 so i'll click ok get that all framed up and we'll hit start and that was it only took two seconds so let's take a look at that now so you can kind of see the difference next to each other. And uh, yeah, I think that came out really good. So I'll go ahead, I'm gonna run one more test and we'll try out a piece of this anodized aluminum. We'll place that down. We'll head back over to the computer. We'll get this set up and let's try that. All right, so back over in Lightburn, I just wrote down my name and uh, Pick this little pirate guy, and for the settings, I'm going to use a speed of 400. I'm going to set this max power at 51%, I guess. Frequency, I bumped down to 10, and the Q pulse, I'm just leaving at 200. Line interval, I did lower to 0 0.01. And the scan angle, I am going to try this 45 degree out, and we'll see how that works. So I can actually highlight this, preview it. We can kind of see how it's going to look if we zoom in, kind of see how it, the line, which way it's going to go. So I'll get this all framed up and then we'll hit start. All right, so that is finished. Let's take a look at it. And there you have it. I think that turned out really, really well. I did, uh, you can kind of see that in a certain angle, you can kind of see some lines like, yeah, there you go. 
that it kind of put, and I don't know if it just, that's the anodizing or what, or it just didn't get all the way down to the aluminum, but overall, I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out, but I may have to tweak some settings a little bit and kind of adjust some things just to see if I can make that a little better, but overall, super happy. All right, so there you have it. I got it unboxed. I tested out a whole bunch of different materials, and my first impression is I think this is absolutely awesome. I think this machine is great. I think everything about it is, is really well made. It's put together nice. So you really can't go wrong. I really like that the machine has the electronic lifter. So you, if you need to focus it, you just need to press the up or down arrows to get it into focus. And it did come with this nice ruler. And for me, I found the, the peak perfect point was 338 millimeters. So definitely comes in useful to be able to just go up and down without having to you know, turn a lever or anything like that. It does have the emergency kill switch right on front in case anything happens and you just need to turn it off real quick. It does come with the 200 millimeter lens, the F theta. And it even comes with a foot pedal in case you're doing some batch processing. All the tools you are going to need are included. And this was super simple to put together. Like I said earlier, I think it only took about 10 minutes. It does come with the EasyCAD 2 software if you want to use that and you get it for free with it. I prefer Lightburn, so that's what I chose, but it does come with EasyCAD 2. It does come with the little adapters in case you need to place pieces down and you can center it and align it using these. And it even came with a nice pair of safety goggles. So I will be putting out some upcoming videos as well to kind of go over more into detail on certain settings and certain things like engraving on the dog tags and, and things like that. And I actually off camera, I went ahead and, and did my own coin. As you can see here, the depth, if you're interested in doing some deep engraving, I'm going to go over the settings I used for that and how to get good results. So definitely stick around for those future videos. But overall, I do absolutely recommend this machine. Again, this is the Monport GL60. This is the MOPA JPT Amazing Fiber Laser. I think it's just fantastic, and I will definitely be using this for, for many years to come and for many projects. If you are interested in picking up this machine, I will put a link down in the description on where you can pick this up. And if you have any questions, about settings or anything like that, feel free to leave a comment below and let me know. And if there's anything you wanna see done, again, leave a comment, let me know, and I'll try and answer as many as I can. I can't always answer everybody, but I'll try. Well, that's gonna be it for this video, everyone. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.